paper. What is wrong with my screen? I hope it's not blurry on your end because it looks blurry on my end. But anyway, welcome, welcome everyone. I am thrilled to have you with me today. This is our live cooking segment once again where I share a recipe with you that, yeah, I've never made it before and I'm making it for a order tomorrow. Um, I have several orders for the holidays and I have to make four dozen cupcakes. And so I thought, you know what? I better try these out before I make them for somebody. <laughs> and so why not make them today? So what is one of your favorite holiday pies or cupcakes or muffins or whatever you often make? For me, you know, I love all desserts, honestly. I don't know if there's hardly any dessert that I don't like maybe besides mincemeat pie. I don't like that. But anyway, well, I shouldn't say that because I don't know if I ever tried it. And raisins are not one of my specialties either. But most other things I can eat way, way too much of. But we're going to make a pumpkin, let me look, a pumpkin uh, cream cheese muffin. And let's say you just can't go wrong with pumpkin, right? I mean, pumpkin is like one of those dishes where you can eat it all the time. But most people just make it for the holidays. Why? You know, why don't we make it uh, more often? I don't know. Maybe it's because people can't buy it. Maybe it's because they don't have a craving for it other than just the holidays. I make my pumpkin pies for several of my kids that love it for their birthdays. Yeah, why not, right? So today we're gonna to start, and of course we have to have the most amazing little spatula. How freaking cute is that? Um, we're gonna start up the holidays, right? So we're gonna first do our, and you know what? I think I, I was working at turning on my oven before I came live and I forgot. So we're gonna put in our sugar and all of our recipes. If you want them, uh, put email in the comments below and. I will get you the link to sign up for my email list so you can be in the know of all the recipes that I make uh, because who wouldn't love that, right? I know, for me, I love it. So we're going to put in our oil. And let me turn my, whoops, got to put my battery on first. I'm like, why is this not working? Wrong way, there we go. I'm um, gonna put, put our sugar and our oil together. And that was two cups of oil, just to let you know. Now, how many of you um, make your own pumpkin or grow your own pumpkin? Anyone out there like that? Then stir this up. Actually, like one and a third cup. One and two cups. It looked like a ton of oil, didn't it? Um, and then we're gonna put in our four eggs. We're gonna whip those together. All right? And then we're gonna put in our pumpkin. Now, I canned my own pumpkin. I took the whole pumpkin, put it in my Instant Pot, and then took it out and scraped all the seeds out and put it in my blender and blended it really nice and smooth and then strained any extra water off of it or liquid I should say and then um and then I canned it and this is how it looks when it's canned um this is pure pumpkin and canning it yourself is so awesome because then you know exactly what is in your food okay this day and age, they can add so many additives and things. If you're watching your uh, diet for any reason, canning your own things is the way to go because then you know exactly what is in your food, okay? So I'm gonna do two cups of pumpkin puree and measuring that out sometimes can be a challenge um, or because like I have mine in pints and I, they're not all the filled up the same and so I have to measure mine out. So we're gonna mix this all together. And I just looked and I think I forgot to measure out, measure out my flour. I just thought of that. 
So that is okay. We will work. We will work at this together. All right. So I'm going to put that in there so that doesn't fall over. Next, we're going to add our seasonings. One teaspoon of cinnamon. Yeah. Don't judge my big thing of cinnamon. I bake a lot, so you know what? I buy it in big containers, and especially when you find it at your a discounted store for only six bucks. I mean, you wouldn't love that, right? So I'm gonna put that to the side because we're gonna need our cinnamon again later. One teaspoon of nutmeg. Now, when I saw that, I'm, I was cringing. I don't like nutmeg that well, so I am only going to do about a half a teaspoon. I think one teaspoon is like a little too much. Um, who might have judged, right? It's pumpkin, but I don't like that much pumpkin, uh, that much nutmeg. And then another, a teaspoon of cloves. And again, I feel that's too much. I'm going to do a half a teaspoon <laughs> because I feel like they can be too overpowering, okay? Because, let me show you, they ask for pumpkin pie spice as well. And I'm like, why do all of those? But you know what? I don't want to go against the, the owner that made up the recipe, but I think I'm going to modify it just a tad. <laughs> so this calls for four teaspoons of pump, uh, pumpkin pie spice. Again, we have all the same seasonings that we just put in there. So I am only going to do about three teaspoons instead of four because I don't want it to be too overpowering. And then we're going to put in one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. And again, you can tell that I have my baking soda in bulk because um, I bake a lot. So we're gonna put that to the side and we're gonna measure out our, let me grab my one cup measuring cup. Totally forgot about the flour. I mean, how can we forget about the flour? So um, I'm good and I have my flour right here on my counter anyway. So we're gonna put one cup of flour in there a while. I'm gonna measure out the other cup so that's ready to go. You always level off your flour. And then let's mix this up real careful without making a mess everywhere. So I hope that you have some great holiday plans for with the family, uh, because there's nothing like making those wonderful memories with your family, with the kids, with the grandparents, and all of that. Uh, but smell of pumpkin and things like that is just so enticing over the holidays, right? Am I the only one? Or what is your favorite? And let me know in the comments, what is one of your favorite smells that you remember made from your grandma or that you still love to bake because now your grandkids or now the grandkids and your children are saying, Oh my gosh, I love that smell. Anybody else out there? With the other cup of flour in there. Whisk that together. This is gonna make a lot of pumpkin. Just saying. All right. mixed up so let me grab my let me grab my last cup of flour one two three yep three table three cups of flour always want to make sure just before I add that last one because I sometimes do read directions wrong so once this is mixed together you spoon you must spray the muffin tins or put your cake pan liners in there, which I already did. I put my liners in there. Ah, oh, looks so good. Okay, let's turn this off. And I'm actually going to just wash off my beaters a little bit because we're gonna make a filling. We're gonna make a filling to go in with that. It's, remember I said it's cream cheese? So we're gonna work at that next. So I wanna just use the same beaters. So there we go. Now we have our batter all mixed.
mix together. I mean, perfect, perfect batter. That's a lot of batter, let me tell you. So we're gonna set that to the side. Let me wipe up my workstation a little bit. I do not like working in messy, in messy areas. That's one of my little pet peeves I found out. I did not know until I started cooking and uh, catering for others and I realized that I like to have clean stations. <laughs> Anybody else out there like that? So next we're gonna take our one block of cream cheese and we are just going to blend this for nice and smooth. And it can be room temperature, which has been sitting out for a few hours. We'll whisk that together. Do it very slowly because we don't want the flour, the, the powder sugar to go everywhere. So we're just going to do this very gently until it gets started getting incorporated. And then we'll turn up the speed on it. All right, so then we're going to add the rest of our powder sugar and we're going to blend this together. And then we'll turn up the speed. And this is going to be the filling inside of our cupcake. Oh, are you ready for this? It's going to be delicious. We love anything cream cheese. And this is by far, you know what? I, mean, I don't think it's going to be vanilla. Who doesn't like vanilla? I'm going to add a little bit. The recipe didn't call for vanilla, but I just feel like cream cheese always needs a little bit of vanilla. Just a tad. Nothing wrong with that. All right. That looks perfect. We're going to set that to the side. Let me grab this spatula and we'll just spread this all together in a corner so we can easily take a scoop and dish that. Now, it called, the recipe called to freeze this. Well, I don't have time right now for that. <laughs> and especially lie with you. So we are going to do this differently. We're going to take one, no, let me grab the small scoop. We're going to take one large scoop. Let me bring this over here so you can easily see what I'm doing. I don't know why it looks cloudy. I hope that it's not too cloudy for you guys. And we got our cupcake lined uh, tin here. And we're gonna take, you know what? I think I'm supposed to, cause that's supposed to be inside. Hmm, hang on, I just thought of it. I'm not reading my directions all the way down through right now. So that's my bad. But we're gonna use this one. Um, this is two tablespoons and we're gonna put two tablespoons of this in there. And then we're going to put one tea, tea, one tablespoon of that in the center. And then we're going to top it with a little bit more pumpkin and then a crumb, a crumble on the top of that, okay? There we go, I'll work at that later. And so now we're gonna take this and we're gonna just take like one little scoop and we're gonna press that down in the center. Ah, oh, this is gonna be so amazing. Who loves cream cheese, cheesecakes, cupcakes, whatever? This is gonna be like amazing. I know it, I can feel it in my bones already. So excited. And again, if you did not get it from the beginning, um, if you're joining us live, make sure that you put recipe or email why is that not coming there we go in the comments and i will get you my link to get added to my email list where i post all my recipes that i make so that way you can be in the loop every time i make something because i cook a lot i bake a lot come on i should have maybe scraped my 
Okay, I wonder if we can press that down. Let me take this off. There we go. Next, we're going to take our batter once again, and we're just going to put a little bit on top of that cream cheese mixture. So it's kind of hidden. There we go. And then, I mean, these may seem time consuming, but they're not. Don't let it scare you because it's going to be so uh, awesome on your dinner table. Or if you want it for, you know, in the evening, Thanksgiving evening, um, you know, that's one thing that I'm probably going to take them to as well. If I have leftovers till then, my family seems to uh, love anything pumpkin and we tend to eat them before the actual day ever gets here. That's why I have to freeze way more of my stuff. So, so we get to have it at the actual time that we want it. So um, anyway, that's just my family. We love desserts. Okay, there we go. Oh, this is gonna be great. Now put that to the side and now we're gonna work on our crumb bun. We left that right there. And this, I it was cleaning up too much here. We're gonna put in one half cup of, powder, of regular uh, sugar and one third cup of flour and two teaspoons of cinnamon. So we're gonna take our cinnamon again. Two teaspoons of cinnamon. And six tablespoons of butter, okay? And I already have it here, it's kind of room temperature-ish, not too much. And we're going to cut that in our mixture. And I don't know about you, I never got a pastry blender. I just always just use a knife or a wooden spoon or something um, to cut it up in smaller pieces. And then if I want it much, much finer, then I will often use my hands. That's how my mom always did it. And isn't it funny how you do things that your mom always did? Um, have you ever heard the story where Thanksgiving came and the daughter was cooking up this turkey and she always cut off like the legs or something. And one day her husband asked her, why are you cutting off the legs? And she's like, well, I don't know, my mom always did it. So he went to, his, to her mom and said, why did you cut the turkey legs off? And she goes, well, I don't know, my, my mom always did it. So he went to the daughter's grandma and asked, you know, why did you cut the legs off your turkeys? Uh, I don't know. I guess because m my mom always did it. And so it went on and on like that until finally they're like, it's because she didn't have a big enough a pan. <laughs> I was laughing so hard when I read that because isn't that true? We tend to do things that our mom did or our dad did or something like that when reality, just do what you want to do. Um, if it doesn't fit in your pan, great. If not, if it fits in your pan, just let those darn legs on there, right? <laughs> All right, so we got this crumble pretty much made. I'm just doing more of that butter. Oh, this is gonna, oh my God. I love crumble on the top of things because it adds that crispiness, that crunchiness. Anybody else like that? Okay, there we go. Let's bring my pan back over here. And we're just going to put a little bit of this crumble on the top of, of these cupcakes. And then we're going to bake this. And I think it's supposed to bake for, I, I can't read it right now. That's a lot of butter in, the, in that crumble. But we will see how it turns out. Remember I said I never made this before. And I want to make it tomorrow for a customer, a client of mine, that um, knows I take orders for the holidays. So, let's see. Why is it sticking to my hand? It's a lot of butter in here. This is never gonna be enough of crumble for all that batter. I must be putting too much crumble on. Maybe, is that what? Okay, let me try to wash my fingers off here a little bit. But I like I like crumble on my on my cupcakes. So here we go. Let me wash my hands off. Get 
all that butter off my hands. Not the easiest job, right? All right, there we go. So that's it. Now we're gonna bake these. We're gonna bake these for, oh, 425 degrees. Oh, okay. Let me turn this up to 425. There we go. Four twenty five for six minutes. Bake six minutes for twenty five, and then you turn it down after six minutes. This is a very interesting directions. I've never seen this before. After six minutes, without opening the oven door, turn your oven light on and look at the muffins. They should have risen about a fourth of an inch above the edge of the pan by now. If not, leave them in one more minute. Once the muffins have puffed over the edge of the pan, lower the temperature to 350 and do not open the door. Once the lower heat to 350, bake for another 23 to 25 minutes. What the? <laughs> hey, you guys see my mistakes all the time. So anyway, we're gonna give this a whirl. I don't know. So. Um, I will have to let you know in my email how they turn out. <laughs> so again, I hope you have a wonderful time with your family this week. Enjoy the rest of the day. Um, we will look forward to seeing you back next week. All right. Take care.